It was just something in the air in the early 70s, and I knew I wanted to do something to sort of amplify the voices of people who weren't being heard. An early feminist, Lisa F. Jackson, studied documentary filmmaking at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Lisa's body of work is very diverse. She won two Emmys, one of which for the ABC production The Secret Life of Barbie, which focuses on how young girls relate to the doll. But her latest movies all fight for the rights of women. The advocacy pieces, um, they find you. A good example is her movie The Greatest Silence, Rape in the Congo. It won the Special Jury Prize for Documentaries at the Sundance Film Festival. I had originally wanted to do a film that was I was going to go to five or six countries and try to understand the, the female vocabulary of war. Because what we know about war, what we understand about war, kind of comes out of a male vocabulary. So I ended up going to the worst place first. And I went there not thinking I was going to stay for six weeks. I was going to shoot a couple of interviews and come back and put together a clip reel for my uh, fundraising. Sometimes the films find you and they, you know, you end up in a location looking for one thing and you find something completely different. You have to be prepared to listen to what people need to say. So I felt an obligation to hear those stories all the way through. Lisa also interviewed some of the rebel soldiers that hide in the bushes and rape countless women every day. They have no shame about what they do. They didn't think that they were doing anything wrong. Uh, and that was chilling. I mean, it wasn't the machetes and the, you know, the guns and the posing. And I felt that they, they were not a threat to me as long as I had the camera. The camera was is sort of was my weapon. And but it was horrifying that they actually wanted to go on camera and brag about what they'd done. <laughs> Her latest movie profiles the New York Police Department's Sex Crimes Unit. The Sex Crimes Unit uh, took me almost 16 years to make, 15 years. Um, I first approached that office in the 90s, in the early 90s. I was really <laughs> annoyingly persistent. Um, and then it just became luck because the district attorney was retiring and this was really the jewel in his crown. This unit was... Uh, was the first in the country de dedicated to prosecuting sexual violence. Once he saw that there was a value to letting a film crew in, then it was about establishing the ground rules. And the prosecutors saw it as an opportunity also to educate people about a lot of the myths around sexual violence. You know, they saw the, uh, the audience for this being potentially their jury pool. Is that your verdict? Yeah. Juror number three, is that your verdict? Yes. Number four, is that your Lisa herself is a victim of sexual violence. She was gang raped by three men in 1976 in Washington, D.C. But she says this hasn't influenced her work in a major way. I don't think having been uh, a victim of sexual violence myself gives me any particular advantage. You know, I compare it a little like to being a military veteran. <laughs> I mean, once you've seen combat, it makes you a slightly different sort of person. And may, does it help you? better to talk to interview soldiers, uh, maybe a little bit. Um, does it uh, cause them to trust you a little bit more because you've also been in uniform? Maybe a little bit, you know. Uh, but I've also interviewed opera singers and, you know, <laughs> I'm not a real opera fan, so. New York Sex Crimes Unit recently investigated two high-profile rapes one in Central Park, the other in Tribeca. They made arrests in both cases. Those stand out because they were reported. The women came forward and the press jumped all over it. So are the number of rapes increasing or just the coverage? Well, the bird watcher was, I mean, it was extraordinarily horrible. But if, if she had been an African-American woman and, uh, you know, this had happened in in the in the ramble on the north end, uh, you know, not in the ramble, but on the north end of Central Park, up near the Lasker ice skating rink near Harlem, nobody would have paid any attention to it. 
it probably would not have gotten any ink at all. But the fact that she was a white woman, she was an older woman, and she was attacked, you know, right in... So that's what I'm saying. Lisa's latest work has concentrated on sexual violence against women. But what does she hope to achieve through her documentaries? Um, those little, size, tiny little seismic changes maybe accumulate into something that's bigger down the line. Um, but you always want something to be different. Yeah. <laughs>